one of the harder things in game development is making your game look visually stunning and visually good. It's something I still struggle with, but somehow in my upcoming game, Hexagod, I actually managed to create a very interesting effect with these clouds here. And specifically speaking today, I want to share with you how I layered five effects together to create this cloud effect. As I keep restarting the demo, we kind of see it pans in and the clouds zoom out. And interestingly enough, what you're going to see in this video is that is as I remove any one of those five different layered visual effects, it's going to ruin kind of the entire uh, ambiance and atmospheric uh, effect that I was able to create here. So without further ado, let's dive right in. I think first and foremost, let's go ahead and showcase what the game looks like without the clouds. I can do that by hiding my dots layer. I named it dots because that's what they originally were called. And then someday I, I turned them into clouds and I never went back and renamed them, but it's my project. So I can name stuff poorly if I want to. That's, that's my prerogative. Simply put here, the vibe is still not too bad, but the name of the game is Hexagod. And I think the clouds actually add in this really nice effect that it's a bunch of clouds, where this seems like it's an island in the middle of the ocean. And it kind of makes the screen a bit visually blah, where those clouds pull in that effect in a really nice way. But now let's talk about the effects. And just remember what it, what it looks like. There's that little bit of a subtle pop in animation. We'll do it one more time so you can kind of see they slowly load in and have a little bit of an animation. That is done using an animation player. Let me flip my face over to the other side there we go we have an animation player which pops it up like that so i take the scale of the whole dot start at 0, 0.0 go up with an ease in to 1.5 for the scale and you can then right click on these to change the easing types and then finally we ease back down with an ease in as well to 1.0 and that gives you that nice little uh, popping up effect the important thing here is noting that you can check this box up here it's not really a check box but it's a little thing you can click on and it will then auto play it on load so now if i uncheck that make sure i kind of reset the the scale there you can see what happens if we go ahead and run the project by removing that small animation we can see Oh my gosh, it makes the project looks like it's lagging in. Isn't that so, like, that's so strange. Let's go back and quickly add that back in. And we can then go ahead and rerun the project yet again to see, compared to that laggy mess we had, it gives it that smooth kind of popping in effect, which I think is wild. That one little change like that animation really, really makes this effect work. The next layered effect I want to talk about is that I slowly uh, have rings of these clouds slowly kind of delayed over time to come in. So it kind of creates this like the clouds are propagating outward and I can really quickly head over into my scripts and go into my game board. And something you'll notice on a lot of these different effects is that I'm doing them in the dumbest way possible. So on my on ready script here, I simply have a for loop which goes through and then has an await, creates a timer of 0.1 seconds before it for it goes through the loop again to create each individual ring on the outside. So if I just remove this await, that's bad programming, but your game can have bad programming in it as long as it works. It doesn't have to be a super smart decision. There's gonna be things that eventually I'll probably run into issues with it, but for now it works fine and that's all that matters. So removing this await timer now can show you what happens if all the rings spawn and all the clouds spawn in at once. Let's see. Oh, right, like, it just poof, it just kind of it there's just clouds and it just it spawns in in a weird way and it just it, i don't know it's another one of those effects where putting that timer back in it was a small little tweak it's literally one line of code in there but that small little tweak that one line of code really kind of gives it that ambiance of like this is your world you're the hexagon i don't take sponsorships on this channel because i want to be a game developer who makes youtube videos and shares my journey with you and not a youtuber who is making games and i think that's an important distinction so if you want to support my work any further you can check out my games chess survivors was my very first commercial game it is has like a 93 percent positivity rating it'll go on sale once a month for 50 percent off so if you want to wishlist it or purchase it for the full five dollars that's up to you There's also some cool bundles you can purchase but more importantly go check out hexagod the layered effect here that we're talking about in this channel is something that adds to this and this game is only going to get better and better and better and so i need your help to go check it out give me some feedback in considering wishlisting it and playing the demo and the next layer I want to remove is going to be this vignette effect where it fades to this blue color. And I can do that really quickly if I come over to the dots by grabbing this color ramp. If you're curious how I'm doing this, there's a quick function here that's called update color. However you want to call it is up to you. I think I'm calling it every process frame because that's the simplest solution. Again, 
Make it simple, make it work. You can optimize in the future if you need to. And then I'm grabbing my color ramp, which is this export variable down here, and I'm sampling it based off of essentially the distance from my center tile or the closest tile to this cloud and sampling that based off of this color ramp. So you can see right now it's set to being about 55% is where it becomes um, straight blue. If I change this color to be that same yellow effect, running the project really quickly here. You can see now if I load that in, you get this pure white cloud effect, which kind of feels a bit overwhelming. Again, it doesn't really impact this zoom in effect, but it makes the game feel kind of really, really loud in my face. And then as I play tiles, it still looks fine with a little bit of a particle effects and stuff like that and playing the villagers and oh wait, I don't know why I did that, uh, but it does it does go ahead and update the villager when you spawn it for some reason, it sets it to be that color. Um, that might have something to do with time beginning as well. Uh, anyways, we can put that back here and you can see with that effect, it really kind of makes it a bit easier on your eyes. When it zooms in, it kind of gives it that nice, here's the center of the map. It reduces that loudness and I think it really really gives it this nice, nice kind of subtle vignette effect. The fourth layer I want to remove here is gonna be the camera panning in like this at the beginning. And that's actually not too bad to do. In my camera script I have on the ready function, I create a tween node that then sets the zoom to be the starting zoom that I want. And then it has a uh, an ease in, ease out tween with trans cubic a small delay at the beginning, so there's that little bit of a pause, and then it zooms in during the length of the intro, which is a global variable, and brings it down um, from 0.42 to my default zoom, which I believe is an export variable set, and then uh, that is just some kind of uh, housekeeping once we're done loading, then you can start moving the camera around. So if I simply comment out the function which creates that load tween, you can see here that when we go ahead and run the demo, a, it's way too close, which is kind of a problem, but B, it, it looks fine, but it just doesn't have that kind of nice polish and that like aha moment of like, here's this, you know, this, it, it, it kind of removes the grandiose of that entrance. And so if we put that back in again, make sure we can run that tween. You can see on ready when it goes in, it'll go ahead and play that tween effect and give us that kind of grandiose uh, zoom in. And the very final effect I wanna do, and this is the cherry on top, is going to be that audio. So I have an audio manager. That'll be a time for a different video where I'll talk about how I, how I function my audio class but this is during the on ready of the main method. It simply plays that global audio. And if I remove that global audio and it just lets that kind of play in effect happen. Yeah, it's just, it's just missing that little cherry on top of a sound effect. It just, it, it, the, the little, it, it, it's, it's each little layer added together to create this interesting effect. And, and that's what I kind of wanted to leave you with here is that you're seeing me talk from a position of understanding how all these different effects work, but you're also missing that I probably did like 20 different effects to see what sort of panning do I wanna do? Do I wanna zoom the camera? How do I wanna do these effects? Do I want these clouds to look like? What what do the clouds look like? What are, What is the vignette effect? What color is the vignette effect? What color is the center effect? You're, you're seeing the end result of a lot of experimentation and hopefully by seeing this, A, you learn something about how you can do this in Godot, but B, if you're not a Godot user, you can see how you can layer in effects. Again, no shaders here, nothing that I would consider super smart, but doing a few things and kind of figuring out which five things or which 10 things or which 20 things, which 20 layered effects can you add into the game to give it that nice ambiance effect can result in something that truly is stunning and a great way to add to the vibes and the feelings you want in your game. Hexagod is over on Steam. You can play the demo right now. I just released something new. I'd love to hear your feedback. This game is the best game I've made. I think it's it's almost subjectively, objectively, both subjectively and objectively the best game I've ever made. I love to check it out. I've been Aramis. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.